Hi, my name's Jay Bucky. I'm a professor of medicine at Dartmouth Medical School, and I'm considering a run for the U.S. Senate from New Hampshire. Back in 1998, I flew on the space shuttle Columbia. And on the shuttle, it takes as long to go around the Earth once as it does to drive from Hanover to Wyndham, New Hampshire, about 90 minutes. So back then, I got a pretty good idea about how small the planet is and how important it is for us to protect it. So why should we take action to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide we produce? Well, I look at it this way. How many of us either have or have had children and we put them in car seats? Do we do this because we don't have faith in our driving? Uh, do we do this because we know for sure that something's going to happen today that will require a car seat? Of course not. We do it because the consequences of not having a car seat and needing one are unacceptable. It's not a chance that we're willing to take. So here we are today, putting a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Can any of us say for sure what the effect of that will be? Will it raise the oceans one foot or five feet or not at all? Will it cause the Earth's temperature to go up one degree or five degrees or ten degrees? There are climate models that help to predict this, but no model is going to be a hundred percent accurate. But we shouldn't be debating the details of climate models. There are really only three facts that we need to know. One is that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. There's no doubt about that. Two is that we're putting a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. There's no doubt about that either. And then the third is that there's strong evidence to show that putting this carbon dioxide in the atmosphere can change the climate of the entire Earth. Just as we shouldn't wait to be in an accident to decide that we want to start using car seats, we shouldn't wait for the climate to change in order to show that our climate models are 100% accurate. The consequences of waiting are just too severe. Now, we all grew up in an economy based on petroleum. It's natural to us. We've never known anything else. But it's very possible to change your energy source. If we were back in the 1830s, it's quite possible that we would have in our homes lamps that ran on whale oil. Back then, Portsmouth, New Hampshire had a whaling industry. They had a, an energy economy that was based on whales. Looking back, we know that that doesn't make a lot of sense. Just as today, we know that our current use of, of petroleum is unsustainable and we need to take action. But taking action is the sensible and common sense thing to do based on what we know now. Not taking action is the radical course. But change can be disruptive, it can be painful, change is risky. Maybe we should go slow. Maybe we should see what other countries do and follow their lead. But that's not the America that I know. We didn't get to have the most productive, the largest, and most innovative economy in the world by shrinking from a challenge. Do we want the new technologies that are needed for this new energy economy to be developed overseas or developed here? Do we want to be getting our solar power systems and wind machines from elsewhere or do we want to be making them here? There are tremendous economic benefits to be gained in this new energy economy, but there's a real premium on being first and on being the best. And if you want to be first, you can't go slow. And if you look back at the beginning of the 20th century, our entry into a petroleum-based economy was anything but slow. The growth in the use of petroleum back then was phenomenal. We need to have the same kind of growth in alternate energy sources now. Now lastly, this isn't just an environmental issue. This is a national security issue. If we truly want to be less involved in the Persian Gulf, then we have to reduce our use of petroleum. We have managed to link our economic future to the stability of our oil supply. We have to break that link. Do we want to be, in the future, spending money, sending it to the Middle East to buy oil? Or do we want to send that to solar power manufacturers here in New Hampshire? Or to people who are making ethanol from biomass in the North Country? This is a choice that we can make, but we need to get going and get in the lead. So what can we do? Well, one thing is to just uh, through our own lives, 
show that it's possible to live a great life just using less energy. We can do, there are simple things we can do right now. But the other thing is that we need to stay involved. And we need to make sure that talking about energy is a priority in any public policy discussion. You know, there's a lot of concern about our political system, about the effects of money, about the effects of special interests. But the basic political system is still intact. And that basic system depends on involvement and on votes. We may differ in how many dollars we have, but all of us have just one vote. And those votes still reign supreme in our political system. So I'm embarking on this effort because I am committed to seeing a new energy economy get started here in the United States. And if this is something that's of concern to you, I ask you to join me and look at our website, bucky08.com. I'd appreciate your support. Thanks very much.